All right, welcome back, everybody, to some more Dominions Five, where we will continue our playthrough in the uh, Nordic Blitz with six players vying for the Throne of Ascension. So here we have the first turn where I, I looked at turn number six, and it's turn number five because I apparently I copied the wrong files. So it, it's there's some mix-ups, and there will be more throughout this playthrough. So we, we don't have a turn six to look at because I copied the files wrong. So here we are in turn number seven, and we will try to fill in the gaps in between the two uh, episodes here. So in this one, your mom has found a magic site, but we will look at the battles first. We are fighting ourselves in Dardania here. This is our prophet expanding with the Orichalcum Guard. They are up against horse tribe cavalry, and spoilers, they can't really hurt our See, they hurt some, give us a little bit of damage, and then we regenerate it with our awesome regeneration bless. And the result is no losses taken. Then we see Jotunheim fighting in a battle here in the Bulwark, over here, across the mountain range. So we have seen, we now see another player expanding. He's expanding with these Ulf, Ulfidin, or whatever you want to call them. They are these, uh, they turn into werewolves if they die so they have like a second form and if that form survives the battle then they survive so let's see here do they lose anyone no and they are also regenerating yeah so no losses taken here oh he did lose one of them but then it revives and comes back so this is happening over here and we can infer from last turn my prophet was here and then I must have sailed over here and cleared this province. It was uh, insignificant PD here. So we've sailed across the oceans. Then we sail back over here to Dardania. And from here... Oh, and I have hired mercenaries, the fast strikers in here, are now aggressively looking at this land, the land of our lord here in 81. And we see the, the, the Jotun player here. So I'm expecting him to absolutely come into the land of our lord here. And I was kind of hoping, uh, if I attack in here and we need his forces, I would probably obliterate this small stack of Ulfidens, especially with my 15 or a Calcum guard and backed up by these Ar longbow archers here, right? So I was hoping for him to come in here so that we could have a fight and I would beat him here. But instead he asks me on Discord, are you moving into 81? And I just tell him yes, and then he backs off. So we don't get a fight in here next turn, unfortunately, but whatever. Over here, uh, we can learn now that I had must have sailed in turn 5. I must have sailed a unit or a uh, storm captain over here. I think he came from up here, actually, from Mirias. He sailed down here to Dawan, where he has now constructed a lab, because we also have a Palisades on the way. Another, uh, a, another scout has been produced here, and since I now have Dominion in this territory, he can sail to all kinds of different territories and start exploring. I always, when I play the Minions 5 games for you and with you guys watching, I want to send out a lot of scouts to sort of get a lay of the land and maybe catch some cool battles that we otherwise wouldn't see, just for the recording. And I think, I mean, if nothing else, it's also informative for me as a player, so I, I, I do like it in no matter what. But that's part of the reason why I'm doing it anyway. Meanwhile, your mom, in the previous turn, has expanded into the Dark Waves, where she... Because I didn't have, I don't think I had a dominion then in any provinces bordering here last turn. So then I decided to side search with her for one turn. And we did find these two lovely, we only find the groom gate because we already had the growing kelp forest for free. Same here, we actually found the cold currents without side searching here when we moved in here. So we have already found two magic size for free and then we find the groom gate here which gives us two death gems so lots of lucky finds for us then an unexpected event occurred in the dark ways you get another positive event for where we just find a ton of gems 
And fast targets has been bought. Yeah, so we bought these mercenaries because again I had so much money, and I also didn't want my opponents to get the mercenaries. So that's part of the reason for buying out the mercenaries. Yeah, and I think I end up buying these archers in the white because it looks. I thought they were all. This is a Pegasus commander leading the force, and I thought all of them then would be riding Pegasi, but it's a Pegasi commander leading a bunch of archers, not a bunch of Pegasi riders. So we get more archers, and I think I buy them in here. Meanwhile, in the capital, we are recruiting Prince Consorts. We are about to hit Alteration 2, which is great. And then I don't think there's much else to say this turn. Oop here has moved up. Oop has moved up. We got Shamblers in here as well, so now I'm recruiting Shamblers in two different territories, just because, again, I like those guys, and they are pretty useful for coastal raiding and also helping expand in the water. And that is it for this turn. I have recruited a guy here now, and I think this pro this is probably the turn where I start a fort in here, because I, I, I determined that... Well, we are not... An, we're not threatened here at all, right? This mountain range is unpassable while, while there's no snow here. Is that how it works? When can you pass here? You can't pass when it's snowy, surely. So I'm not sure, when can you pass across this mountain range? I don't know. Huh. Maybe if you have mountaineering? I'm not sure what this red limiter here, but you can't easily walk across. I can't walk across anyway. And here's a throne province, right? And then this one would be the only other way to get in here. So I did decide that in here we will probably be pretty safe. And it's a high income province again. So I'm starting my second fort here in turn 7 in this province here. And coastal forts are nice for me. So, and it's also right next to another throne, right? So I'm building castles right next to two different thrones already. And, oh, I, had, I don't think I've talked about thrones at all. So here's the thrones that we are playing with, we have seven level two thrones. Bureaucracy, life, death, misfortune, outer, silver, and golden throne. Silver and golden are really good thrones. And misfortune wouldn't hurt me, right? Uh, so this is purely a positive throne for me, because I'm already at max misfortune. So that's quite nice. Anything else? Life, growth plus one would not do anything for me, but... Yeah, bureaucracy is a, not a good one, I think, but it's fine, I suppose. Dominion Conflict is quite nice, and Special Dominion 5, oh right, yeah, that's nice. Okay. And what was my point? We have, we need 8 points to win, so that's 4 thrones out of the 7, so 1 more than half. Right, 4 out of the 7. Alright. So I'm, I'm next to a throne here, I'm next to a throne here, there's a throne on the land here, one down here on this island, which is fairly reachable by me. Can't sail to it from Darwin, but we can sail to this island here, or this little, the sinks, and then, or here, and then we would be able to sail to the island. And then there's a province in the water down here, which is easy for me to claim with my pretender. So. There's one, and in here and there, these three thrones are relatively close to one another. You see the Tis coming up here in Bell, and Jotunheim over here. Can we... No. I'm wondering if we can see the capitals. Uh, of course, I know <laughs> where the capitals of most of the nations are at this point, because I've already played the whole thing. We see Pangea here, but we have already deduced that Pangea lives here in 44, so... It's natural that he owns this province. We have the one across the way here, so he will have this one, and then he is sort of on a, on a uh, what's it called, like a dead end here. So he is expanding out into this area, probably. All right, let's have a look at the next turn. So that's turn number eight. Research and alteration are completed. We are attacking the White Grave with our pretender. These guys are pretty tough. They are they are Amber Clan Tritons. But here we see uh, these guys and most of the guys on the water 
the units on the border come in with piercing weapons, right? And so now we have alteration one. So your mom is casting skeletal body. So she's now pierce resistant. She only takes half normal damage from these attacks. So in fact, since she was already tanky and hard to murder, now she's by piercing weapons almost impossible to kill. And she also raises her protection by one more by casting bark skin. So yeah, she's just becoming like uh, against piercing weapons we have nothing to fear anymore. Which is quite nice. Then in the land of our lord, where I was hoping Jotunheim would come in, but of course he didn't when he, he agreed to my taking it. And it's too bad I was I was seriously considering lying to him and saying, No no, you you go ahead and take that. And I'm like, whoops. You just lost your expanding party. Wouldn't have that have been fun. But I'm not that kind of guy. These the guys that I'm playing with are also super nice, all of them. So I didn't want to be an ass. And here we go. We absolutely clean up this province without too much of a hassle. Did we lose anything? We lose some longbowmen from our mercenary squad, so we don't really care about that. And then in Centania we see the Jotunheim forces expanding one again, so they they're just cutting off me from the rest of that peninsula. So I wasn't fast enough expanding into this general area. But there you go. Up here. But I got these two farmlands here, right? So that's really nice. Yeah, these are just worth a lot of money. And this one is worth 61. 75 here. 91 here. We have now started the Palisades in Ancerna here. Over here I hired Sane, the Pegasus Rider, and was very disappointed to learn that she just had these Amazons as, as helpers and not a proper army. Uh, like Pegasi, I thought they would all be like Pegasi Riders like her, so yeah, I was kind of disappointing, disappointed, but whatever. We expanded into this Southern Ocean here, where we can... I think I said these Amber Clan guards on continual recruitment because they are pretty good underwater units. High high protection for underwater units in general. They are aquatic only, but I mean, it's not that expensive to have them recruiting non-stop down here. And then they are really nice complement to whatever underwater force I make. We see Satis in these this little cavern system here, which is really cool. He was not satisfied with his starting location, I think at all. But he has now pushed my dominion out of here in Oaklands, so yeah, I would I would want to go in there. Pretty sure that your mom is going to be expanding further down into the ocean here. Anything else to note? So now we are here with our prophet. I don't know where I go. I think I go up here. I'm not so sure. I think See, here's one that I don't understand. Good old question, right? Because sometimes we can si use these dark vessels to travel anywhere, but sometimes it just doesn't work. For some reason, I'm not allowed to travel in here with my dark vessels. And if I look at them again, it does say, do, 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 will appear they're only able to exist inside Friendly Dominion, Dominion, and both coasts on the journey must be inside Friendly Dominion. Dark vessels have no limit to how many... Yeah. This one does not tell me that I can't sail here, right? Every province in between is one, two, three, and then here is all inside Friendly Dominion. Why am I not allowed to sail from my character sky here? Even without any units, he's not allowed to sail down here. He can sail here because it's uh, across one, two oceans. It's normal sailing. But for some reason, it's not allowing me to go in here. So sometimes I, I decided then that it's probably because you can only sail to friendly provinces. But we will see later on. But that's not always the case, or maybe I'm wrong and there's something that I'm not understanding. I feel like it's not super consistent. There might be something else going on. But for some reason we cannot sail from here to here, which would be a nice way to then come up with our guys here. I'm not so sure where I go from here. 
Again, we will see next turn, and let's just do the next turn. Research is well on going into construction too. Did we do anything here? We get another positive event giving us gems. We get another positive event giving us gold. So, having taken Misfortune 3 and Turmoil 3, I'm absolutely being way, way too lucky compared to what is fair. People were complaining over having bad luck while I'm sitting here rubbing my palms going, yeah, everything is just fine. Let's do one more turn this episode. In turn 9, Fikia. There's a battle in Mike Marsh. This is down here. All right. This is just your mom expanding into this little skeleton province. They have these long dead horsemen. And so, yeah. Here you would think these guys come in with piercing and we throw down the skeletal body. So this seems like an easy win. But she's taking... Bit of damage, I suppose. And she's moving up. And she's being hurt a little bit here again. She should be regenerating. Oh no, it's a ah, right, because I, I was taking a chance here. There's, these are undead. I was thinking that they can probably not deal that much damage to us, so it should be fine. But we don't have actually a dominion in here, so she's not. She doesn't have regeneration for these this battle in particular. And so she is getting pretty low, down to 34 here, taking another injury, and then she maybe wisely... Oh yeah, down to 4 hit points? Damn! Okay, and so she runs away. 4 hit points, wow. On the brink. I didn't realize that she was that low. But she successfully retreats. So that was a bad, bad call by me moving in here. It's a waste of her turn. She killed, what, 10 long... I mean, she okay, she killed most of the province defense. And she got away, but what a disaster. I should not have done that. Whoops. And she got two afflictions from that. <laughs> so that was really bad. Okay, we are going into Gilgad here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have our Auric Halcom Guard, so we don't really feel like we can lose here. And. Our Storm Captains can now throw down these false fetters, but they're pretty short range, so they don't really support with it. We lose uh, more mercenaries, which is fine. Then there was a battle in Nuptia, where I just send in my mercenary squad here. Oh, I, and I did support them. I see. Okay. With some more Calcum Guard. Alright, maybe I forgot to script them to attack. I think I forgot to script them to fire, so they end up running away. Yeah, and then because they run away and are taking too much damage on the army as a whole, my Aura Calcum Guard end up routing too. So what a disaster of a turn. Luckily they all route down here and survive, so no losses were taken on our Aura Calcum Guard. But damn, what a disaster. See, once again, now I own this territory, so we can't even use that it's the friendly territory thing. I mean, I can still not... Travel here. Maybe it's because I can't sail through independent territories with the dark vessels. Is that what it says? On the dark vessels? Yeah, now, inside friendly dominion. Dominion, not ter ter territory, right? We have friendly dominion in here and here. But I think it's. In, then I'm thinking that it's because it's independent, this territory. And so I'm not allowed. To sail over with the dark vessels for whatever reason. It's really inconsistent in its wording and my understanding of it. For, by all accounts, we should be able to sail down here, is my opinion. But whatever. We got this province this turn, so all is well, and we didn't. I thought when I locked into this turn here the, and saw it, I thought I had lost my pretender, but she survived. She, she ran away, she got away with a chest wound, she already recovered one of them. And then I think I used her to expand somewhere else, just saying this province is basically one, so we just need to send a few units later down the line to take it. But a disaster of a turn for sure. Bad choices by Kijin. Oh well. Then, what else? 
There was an unexpected event. We found a random magic site in Encerna because I am not getting lucky enough. So it goes up to 60 gold per turn, which is amazing because I'm about to finish a fort in here. So now it's going to generate so freaking much gold for me, this particular province. Being boosted even more because it's a coastal province, right? So yeah. And the first palisade is now done down here. We've sent Talaimenes to build a temple. Because it's the only way I get to build a temple is by either using the Prophet, the Pretender, or sending out one of these Prince Consorts. Because I'm not going to spend a turn summoning or recruiting Facian priests in in the capital, right? So I end up sending a, a Prince uh, Consort out, which is fine. So then he can also side search this province with his high stats and stuff. So it's fine in the end, but it's suboptimal. Yeah, that's fine. And here I've been recruiting archers, but then I will switch to Colossi Heavy Infantry. And this was turn number nine. Can we do another turn? Yeah. Let's just move through them here. Save game and quit. Continue old game. Turn number ten. We see a battle in Sola Sol Solian, Solian up here. This is Asphodel expanding, and they have a new thing that I haven't really had a chance to look at yet. This black centaur has been reworked. I don't know if it's part of the mod or the base game, but they now come with a sleep aura. Any any by any before sleep, if they fail a magic resistance roll, mindless. Immune, and then they have sloth power. It's more powerful in provinces with high sloth and less powerful in provinces with productivity. So they are like tied to sleep somehow now, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's the whole thing. And they are the secrets of Asphodel. So the effect we see here is their sleep aura. And they're using these undead carrion monsters. They are skeletal beings in, in, intertwined with wines, like plants. So they are being animated by these plants that are wrapped around them. Look at this elephant here, it's so gross. <laughs> and so they use them as a meat shield to soak up the lance charges and then they come in with the black centaurs and finish off the enemy. Pretty interesting that they also make the enemies fall asleep on the battlefield. I'm pretty sure that unit will wake up when it is hit by an attack, but still it's pretty cool. And this is a commander, is it not? Yes. Carrion Centaur, okay. They are reanimator priests. So they can reanimate these carrion things, and he has more of them back here. Is the prophet here? Oh, this is just a random carcass. And so is this. Oh. They're just using their wine bows, I suppose. Okay. So the commander was this guy up here. That I lost track of. Oh, here. This is the commander of the army. All right. Yeah, just that one carrion centaur. And they do take some significant losses. I think I could have beaten these guys if I had expanded in here, which I, I think I was considering that. But we are expanding here with our pretender now. And uh, this is again just seamen, nothing that your mom can't handle. Also, a big troll. Fatty. Some more tentacles coming in, but they run away. Run away! Alright. Then there was a battle in Kurumu. Which is also, this is right next to where Asphodel is expanding. So we ha now we have a, look at that, our, our Calcum Guard is gathered and we have quite a force at this point. If I had stumbled into Asphodel's expansion party here, I think we would have wiped them. Which would have been very nice, because then you can always throw your hand into the air and say, I didn't mean to do that, I didn't know you were expanding in here. But I went for this one down here instead of the farmland up there. In hindsight, oh, I think I knew he was in here, so it, I had to make the choice where would I think that he expands into. And I should have gone for this Solian up here. It's guesswork, but this is the... This is the uh, farmland, right? So it would have been the better province for me to claim. 
and it also has this island attached. So yeah. <coughs> Scusi. And at this point he messages me on Discord and asks for a non-aggression pact for three turns, which means that if we can't attack each other and if any of us declare war or declare the non-aggression pact to be broken, then we cannot attack each other for the next three turns until as like a, a giving a time limit or like a, a time buffer. So yeah, we uh, we take this one here. Anything else that is new? Took this province. Now we see over here that Jotunheim is expanding into the water here. And so I think I regret when we were in here with the, your mom, we should have moved down to this province here to cut off Jotunheim. I didn't, by then I didn't know that he was living here. I think Simeosis here sailed from like over here to this province here, just as a random pickup and ended up in the, the capital. So then again, it's kind of cool that you have a, a scout with sailing. It allows me to suddenly get a lot of information on this little peninsula. And he has taken to the waters. Yeah, he has recruited some mercenaries that I didn't catch uh, that he used to expand into the water. And I should definitely have recruited these mercenaries just to deny the, uh, the other guys, or the other players, uh, access to the ocean. So an oversight on my part, for sure. I don't know if may I might have bet on them, but I don't think I did. Anyway. Our mom is here. She will be probably expanding down to this territory. Fort has been built up here. Temple has been built in Darwin. And then I think we site search with Talaiman is here. Still more storm captains. Now I think we have the three storm captains that we need. So we can send... Now we can do the whole thing where we send one home. Alright, we send these three over here. Oh! Quillam cannot. I'm not sure where he's going then. I think at this point... Ah, I might send him over here. I think I do that. Actually, because he can sail across. Because he's using the dark vessels to get over here. See, you know, he's sailing across independent tiles. I don't get it, guys. I don't get why. No, no, okay. He can sail one, two, three, four. Maybe that's how he's getting there then, even though the arrow... The arrow isn't indicating the path that they take, it's just the shortest distance between the two provinces. But he might actually be sailing this way here to get there, because he's sailing across friendly ocean tiles. And I don't think he... That's, that's my current working theory, is that they can't sail across independent tiles with the dark vessels. If someone knows better, they are welcome to correct me. Anyway, so the while, while that is happening... Itos and Pramlian is sailing over here. Karitos sails home. And then Selenius comes up here with the new Orichalcum Guard, sort of cycling in, in that way. And here is something that is definitely worth talking about, and that's the fact that this is definitely overkill for taking this particular province, right? So I I need to be better at, and if I had more time, I would maybe have been better at splitting my troops out and expanding into multiple tiles. But I was playing fast and didn't really feel like I had the time to go and make individuals um, search parties or expansion parties. So we have your mom and then the prophet. Palisade's almost done here. We have made a... Colossi Weaver that has moved out here and will be building the lab in here. So she's going to be doing that this turn, probably. Anything else to note? It was unexpected. <laughs> we get another positive event giving us free air gems. A worldwide event has occurred. Uh, evocation rit rituals are cheaper, which makes not, doesn't make any sense. And we have our first famous hero, that is our prophet. He gets a heroic endurance, which I'm pretty sure is completely inconsequential on him because he's throwing priest spells, which, as far as I'm aware, those do not generate fatigue. But I am wrong. Oh, I am wrong. Okay. Fatigue. So he, he doesn't have that yet at this point. 
But he is generating fatigue from spells. Okay. And so this one allows him to get rid of fatigue faster. All right. So that is, in fact, really good on him. I thought it was useless on him. But it, uh, hmm. because if you look at priest spells, they cost fatigue or zero. But of course, that can be modified by armor. So he is gaining spellcasting encumbrance. Ah, so he's gaining nine encumbrance still, despite the, the spell being free. I didn't actually know that. Okay. So that doesn't make a difference for him. He will be able to cast spells even more consistently than he already is. All right. Nice. And that's it for this turn. Turn number 10. And so we're moving through them relatively quickly, but the coming turns will be hopefully a little bit more interesting. So that's it for this time, folks. I hope you are enjoying this playthrough. More to come soon. See you then, and bye-bye.